Making a DIY respirator using the Ecoflex 0035 silicone and a Task 8 casting resin. Now today we're gonna show you how you can use a simple 3D print of a respirator to make a block mold that's very soft and stretchable that's gonna allow us to create multiple models which will lead us to make a gang mold. Now, our project goals for this is to have a simple design for our respirator that has a good flow ratio. Uh, it's a reusable model so that we can sterilize it using an autoclave. And then, of course, to make multiple castings in a quick period. Now, let's just jump into this project and see how we do this. Now, like I mentioned, we're going to be using a 3D printed model. We got this online. It was a free download, and we're going to make it available as well in the description below for you to download if you want to. But just understand that there's many different models available, and you can choose between many different um, respirator setups. Now, we went ahead and 3D printed this model. And now we're gonna use it to make a mold out of it so we can recreate more models. Now, as always, you wanna study the model first. And I noticed these uh, holes here for the straps and we're gonna get rid of these because it makes the respirator um, useless if you have holes in the sides. So we're gonna plug that up with a little bit of uh, Sculptix soft clay. This is uh, sulfur free oil-based clay, which is compatible with pretty much any platinum or tin-based silicone. Now, once the model is prepped, we're going to position it onto the uh, clay bed that we set up, and we're going to press it firmly into that clay bed. And then we're going to put a surrounding mold box around it. And here I'm using uh, some plastic sheet on the left and then aluminum sheet on the right for the smaller part. The molding material that we're using today is the Ecoflex 0035 Fast. Now, this material is a platinum cure silicone that has a mix ratio of one to one by volume. So no gram scale is necessary. The work time is 2.5 minutes. So it's again, extremely fast with a full cure of five minutes. More importantly, it's also on a 0035 shore scale, making it super soft and easy to demold of complex pieces. We can go ahead and dispense the material and then we're gonna combine it into a clean mixing container. And then we're gonna uh, mix it thoroughly, scrape the sides and scrape the bottom, as you hear me say many times. Work fast, but thoroughly. Again, scrape the sides and then scrape the bottom. Once you have the material mixed, get it quickly into your mold box, pour at the lowest level of the mold box and let the material find its own way up, seek its own level. It will push away any air bubbles from the model surface and won't trap them on your mold, uh, mold surface. And once the material is poured, we're gonna allow this five minutes to cure before demolding. Now, after five minutes, the mold is ready to be demolded. So you can see the material got a little yellow. This is normal. Um, we can go ahead now and demold our original model out of that mold. Now, we're going to use these molds to create more models so that we actually can create a gang mold and be able to produce a lot more castings in a very short period of time. For the castings, we're gonna be using the Task 8. This is a heat resistant urethane resin. And the reason why we picked this product is with the anticipation withstanding the temperatures of going into an autoclave to be cleaned. So these masks are made with the intentions of getting cleaned. And it will withstand a high temperature off that autoclave. Now it is a one-to-one -one mix ratio by volume with a working time of two and a half minutes. But before we dispense any material, make sure you thoroughly premix the A and B separately. And then we can go ahead and dispense the material. This is a one-to-one -one mix ratio by volume, so no gram scale is necessary. Now, once you combine A and B together, 
in a clean mixing container, make sure that you work quickly, work fast, mix the material A and B together thoroughly by scraping the sides, scraping the bottom of your mixing container, and then get it into your mold quickly. And once you pour the material in there, we're going to scrape away any of the extra material over to top and make sure that the uh, pieces actually fit together nicely. And then here you can see what uh, it means to exotherm. So the material on the left, there is more concentration, more mass, and it heats up faster while the shield on the right, the cover is much thinner and will cure slower. So about 40 minutes is allowed for the material to fully cure. And we're gonna proceed to repeat that procedure and cast the additional four pieces so that we can make a gang mold. And here are our models. They're ready for the gang mold setup. And now we're going to jump in and show you how to make a gang mold using these models. So we're going to line them up again onto a, a bed of clay that we laid out. This is, again, Sculptex soft clay, sulfur-free clay. It will not inhibit the cure of our platinum silicone. And then we're going to put a mold box uh, around our models. Here I'm using the aluminum flashing that you might be familiar with. This is really easy to work with and uh, you can create custom mold boxes very fast and easily. And you can see that I pretty much hug the shapes off those models. That's going to allow us to use less material. And because this uh, bigger mold is quite tall, I'm going to add some buttresses on the side to support that aluminum shim. There should be at least three quarters of an inch of material or space between the models. So there's enough material to support the structure of the mold without deforming the castings that are going to come out of that mold. Now, like I said, we're using the Ecoflex 0035 Fast. But just like previously, this is a fast setting material. And even though I have a lot of material here to work with, almost a full gallon, I still need to mix it fast and get it into the mold box. As always, scrape the sides, scrape the bottom of your mixing container thoroughly, and then get it into your mold box. As always, when you're doing pour-on molds and block molds like this, you want to pour the material in one single spot and allow the material itself to seek its own level and fill up the mold box that way. Do not swerve around and pour the material all over your model. Just allow it a natural rise on its own. And then we're going to allow this five minutes to fully cure. The same dispensing and mixing procedure is repeated for the second mold of this project, the front cover of the respirator. So we're going to dispense, mix thoroughly, and pour the material, and then allow it five minutes for a full cure. Now, once the Ecoflex has cured, we can go ahead and remove that aluminum flashing to reveal our mold. And here it is flipped upside down. We can see that the material is really soft. This is on a double zero 35 shore scale. So super soft silicone. Uh, it's easy to get these somewhat intricate, somewhat difficult parts to easily be pried out of the mold, even though the mold walls are about an inch thick. So here you can see that even though the mold is nice and thick and sturdy, it's still flexible and uh, castings are easy to retrieve. The second mold of our uh, project can also get demolded. This is fully cured. And then we're going to simply uh, remove the original models out of that mold and get it ready for the casting process. Now, let's talk about our casting resin choice, the Task 8. Why do we go with that particular resin? Now, for once, the Task 8 is really fast setting, but more importantly, it is heat resistant. And we are anticipating this material to be cleaned, so the masks can be cleaned in an autoclave uh, at elevated temperature and steam. And therefore, we specifically went with a product that is high deflection, yet very fast fast setting. And once you mix the two components together, you want to get it quickly into your mold. And then any of the extra material above the mold line should be scraped away 
so that we have uh, clean uh, surfaces, straight surfaces, and they will actually fit together with, uh, with the other part of the project. The material is now allowed a full cure. If you have smaller parts, it takes longer for the material to exotherm and fully cure than if you have larger parts with a lot more mass. Now the product is allowed a cure of 40 minutes. I'll show you here how we're casted the front uh, faces for the mask as well here using again, the same materials are used fast setting uh, silicone, for the mold and then the fast setting task eight for the actual castings. And then we can go ahead and demold these castings. And as you can see, the mold is quite nice and flexible and I'm able to pop these out quite easily. And because we scraped the top, there isn't much flashing to be cleaned off, just very, very minimal. And here are our castings. They're ready for the next step of the process. And we can go ahead and start creating our uh, silicone gasket that's going to go onto the respirator in order to create an airtight seal uh, around the face of the person wearing it. Now, for the gasket, we do require a mold as well. Uh, for this, once again, we're going to use our uh, 3D printer to, down, uh, to, to print a uh, mold for the actual gasket channels that we're going to be creating. And once again, this mold, uh, the 3D printed mold is going to be available in the uh, description below for you to download if you want to. Now, the uh, gasket itself is created again out of the Ecoflex 0035 for several reasons. One, it is skin safe. Uh, two, it is very fast setting. We can go ahead and now pour this into the channels. And then we're going to insert uh, the second part of that uh, mold setup. This is going to keep a uh, slit down the middle that's going to fit right over the edge of our mask. So really important to have that in there, otherwise it's gonna be rendered useless. And then we're gonna allow this five minutes to fully cure. So now that our silicone has set up, five minutes of time, we can debold those channels. And here I just want to show you what that looks like. You can uh, spread them open in a V shape. And here's the other one. Uh, by the way, you can print these in any kind of lengths. Uh, if you want to make one continuous channel uh, that I prefer, you can do that. Or you can make several small ones that are the size for each individual mask. So that's up to you as far as how you want to handle the uh, making of those channels. Now, to adhere the silicone gasket that we made to the actual respirator, we're going to use a silicone adhesive. This is called Silpoxy. Uh, but more importantly, this product is uh, considered skin safe, and it's tested to be skin safe once it's cured. So we're going to uh, first measure out the length of the gasket that we need. And once we have that measured out and cut to shape, or size rather, we can go ahead and put some of that silicone adhesive right into that V channel of our gasket. Uh, simply squeeze a little bit as I uh, spread this out. And then we're going to put this on the actual respirator itself. So again, just go around the perimeter and press this down firmly. And then we're going to put a clamp on the bottom to hold it tight while the material cures. Now, one thing I discovered is that even though this has a full cure of 12 minutes, I like to let it sit for at least half an hour for it to have a good bond so that it won't uh, tear uh, uh, once I start using it. So allow this half an hour to fully cure. Now, once the silicone has cured, we can go ahead and finish our mask. And for that, I'm just going to make some straps that are gonna hold the uh, respirator on my head or my face. To create a filter for a respirator, we're gonna be using a vacuum bag. And these are not just any vacuum bags, we're using HEPA vacuum bags. It's uh, filter is used for highly efficient filtration. 
I'm simply going to cut this to shape and then we can uh, use it to assemble the respirator together. As you can see, the, the filter itself should fit nice and snug inside that grill so that there's no holes visible where air can actually flow through without going through the filter. Now we can go ahead and assemble the respirator. We're going to put that grill into the front and proceed to attach the rubber bands that are going to hold the whole thing on our head. Now, while our respirator has a very basic design, it's also very effective. It has 100% coverage of the vents, and because we're using a uh, HEPA filter, its uh, filter is used for highly efficient filtration. Now, with the gasket that we added made out of silicone, it has a secure fit with no air leaks. Now, we send a test unit respirator to a local hospital here to test how the unit would perform in an autoclave. Now, uh, if you don't know what an autoclave is, it's a machine that exposes uh, tools uh, to heat and uh, steam to clean them. Now, they expose this piece to 250 Fahrenheit for 30 minutes and tested uh, to confirm that the task A resin did not distort or deflect and it passed with flying colors. Now, another way to clean and sanitize your respirator is to actually run it through a dishwasher cycle. Make sure that it's actually on a hot cycle. Now, once the dishwasher is finished with the cycle, it is clean and ready to be used again. A quick pro tip here is to either uh, handle the respirator with gloves once it's sanitized or thoroughly wash your hands so to avoid any kind of contamination from handling the actual sanitized unit. Now the mask itself can be reassembled together and we're going to make sure to use a clean a new filter. This respirator is now certified sterile and is ready to be used. Now, if you got inspired by this project and you'd like to give your own projects a go and need some material, you can visit any one of our distributors around the world. So, and there you have it, a step-by-step -step procedure that I use to achieve my project goals and the desired outcome. Now, we went from a 3D model to create a model so that we can create multiple castings using a gang mold very quickly. But most importantly, we created a simple yet effective respirator that has high efficient flow and you can actually clean it and reuse it. So you can clean it in an autoclave, sterilize it, and then reuse it. Now, if you have an idea about what we should do next, let us know down in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. Now, to keep up with our latest mold making, casting, and other videos, remember to subscribe.